So the future looks really good for lithium ion cells. And if you were listening to Tesla's battery day, you just come away from there saying, you know, this is amazing. Tesla's just moving forward at the speed of light, upscaling their factories. They know they need terawatt hours of lithium ion cells for both energy storage and for, for vehicles. And it's an incredibly exciting time. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. To kick things off, we'll start with an update on the utility scale BESS, which is just battery electric storage system between PG&E or Pacific Gas and Electric and Tesla, which is constructed at Moss Landing. Moss Landing is in Monterey Bay in California, just south of San Jose. You're looking at the most recent footage of construction progress. Construction is expected to be finished by early 2021, and the best should be operational sometime in Q2 2021. When it's finished, it will have 256 Tesla mega packs, which are each capable of three megawatt hours of energy storage. The best will have the capacity to store and dispatch up to 730 megawatt hours of energy to the grid at a maximum rate of 182 megawatts for up to four hours during periods of high demand. PG&E's agreement with Tesla does contain an upsize option that can increase the capacity of this system to 6 hours, which would be 1.1 gigawatt hours total. Remember, megawatt is power, megawatt hours is energy. The best analogy I've ever seen is water traveling through a hose. The higher the megawatt number, the faster the electricity travels through the wire. In terms of megawatt hours or energy production and storage, think of a bucket. The larger the megawatt hour number, the larger the bucket, and thus the larger the capacity. Now, to give you some context, the last five quarters of Tesla's megawatt hour quarterly storage deployments were as follows. 415, 477, 530, 260, 419 megawatt hours. So this 730 megawatt hour project alone would actually make for Tesla's best quarterly megawatt hour deployment when it does hit the books. Pacific Gas and Electric predicts Moss Landing Bess will save more than $100 million over a 20-year lifespan. Next up, we get news that Tesla is limiting its used vehicle warranty. On the website, it says, Tesla used vehicles are covered by the remainder of four years or 50,000 miles left on the basic vehicle limited warranty. After expiration, the used vehicle limited warranty provides additional coverage of one year or 10,000 miles. If the basic vehicle limited warranty has already expired, the used vehicle limited warranty will provide coverage of one year or 10,000 miles starting from your delivery date. Tesla has historically lost money on service and so with a larger portion of their fleet becoming older vehicles, changes like this should not be unexpected. As it turns out, that tweet that I found Saturday night turned out to be legit as now multiple sources are indeed reporting that Giga Shanghai will begin exports. Moneyball tweeted, Tesla plans to export made in China models to New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, and the EU, China Media Report citing an inside source. He then added, the first batch of made in China Model 3 standard range plus to head to Europe next Tuesday. Vehicles already parked on Shanghai dock waiting to be shipped to the EU countries, including Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Hungary, Switzerland, the report added. Hopefully on the Q3 financial call, which by the way will be this Wednesday, October 21st, we get a question about their motives for exporting from Giga Shanghai to Europe. There is of course plenty of speculation, but it would be best to hear directly from Tesla. Speaking of getting more information, I'd love to hear more about Tesla in Indonesia. Indonesia is one of the world's biggest nickel producers, but has also recently put a ban on exporting nickel ore in order to encourage the industry to process it locally. Indonesia is basically hoping that this measure will encourage companies like Tesla to invest in manufacturing finished products in the country using their nickel for batteries. In the coming weeks, as talks between Tesla and the Indonesian government become more concrete, I will definitely plan to do a deep dive into the Indonesian market and what we can expect for Tesla there. So make sure you subscribe so as to not miss that episode. But to put a bow on this piece for now, the coordinating minister for maritime affairs and investment, Luhat Binsar Panjaitin, also commented on the situation and he said that he told Tesla they would secure their nickel reserve if they invest in building a battery factory in the country. A quick non-Tesla item, but important nonetheless, Twitter user 50 Shades of Way said an oil tanker with 50 to 60 million gallons of oil is currently sinking in the Gulf of Perea. That's five times more than the Exxon Valdez spill. The Venezuelan government is denying any problems. If the world doesn't act now, this will be one of the biggest disasters ever. Here's a quick clip of the video that was shared. Uh, 
there's quite the risk of coming out here because you can see for yourself, we're not imagining it, these are not false images. Right there, right no one is doing anything. You can see that it's held together by the anchor chain, but that's not enough. If something goes on, if we have bad weather, there are a number of circumstances that could cause the vessel to flip, to flip and there'll be no recourse. The latest update on this topic is that the ship has indeed been stabilized, but these reports are still unconfirmed. I have linked the article to the description below, so after this episode, if you'd like to learn more, go ahead. There were, of course, even talks that this entire thing was staged due to trade war issues. However, it wouldn't be a story in 2020 without a conspiracy theory behind it. From Bloomberg, we get some positive news about solar and wind energy production. They said, for the first time ever, solar and wind made up the majority of the world's new power generation, marking a seismic shift in how nations get their electricity. Solar additions last year totaled 119 gigawatts, representing 45% of all new capacity, according to Bloomberg. Together, solar and wind accounted for more than two-thirds of the additions. That's up from less than a quarter in 2010. The surge comes as countries move to slash carbon emissions and as technology costs continue to fall. This is of course a good start, but it's not enough in the long run. Coal still represents a big share, roughly 30% of the installed capacity globally, and 35% of all the power produced last year still came from coal. There is a lot of work to be done to replace that capacity. I wanted to share quickly a Model Y summoning through a flooded parking lot. Sticking with the theme of video clips, here is one of the new Model 3 center console. Next up, Wedbush analyst Dan Ives raised his price target for Tesla to $500 from $475 previously. In his note, he said, quote, We believe Tesla's improved manufacturing efficiency and shining Giga 3 success in China will be on full display later this week and will lead to another strong bottom line performance, which should beat the street in our opinion. He added, in terms of overall unit demand heading into year end, we believe Tesla is on pace to impressively achieve in the area code of 500,000 units for the year, a line in the sand that was a pipe dream six months ago as Tesla and other auto players have navigated this unprecedented COVID backdrop. So Ives maintained a neutral rating on Tesla stock, but is obviously somewhat bullish for the end of the year. Great news on SpaceX. Back in May, they submitted an application with the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission, or CRTC for short, to apply for a license to offer Starlink satellite broadband internet. SpaceX, of course, is looking to provide internet service globally eventually, primarily in places where internet is unreliable and unavailable. If you didn't know, millions of people around the world still do indeed lack access to affordable internet in their homes. So on October 14th, Canadians actually created an official petition that was shared on social media asking their government authorities to ask the regulatory agency to grant SpaceX Starlink a license. So in less than three days, the petition gathered over 2,000 signatures from residents living across the country. After all of this support SpaceX received, on October 15th, the CRTC finally granted the company a license to provide Starlink satellite broadband internet. Vincent on Twitter tweeted, Tesla is 2020's top selling brand in South Korea with a massive 79.6% of EV market share. The article said Tesla sold 2,056 EVs in September 2020, accounting for more than 91% of South Korea's total EV sales. 
This truly jaw-dropping market share demonstrates that Koreans very clearly have a preference for the highest quality EVs. In the first nine months of 2020, Tesla sold 10,518 vehicles, which accounted for a whopping 79.6% of the nation's EV sales. Customers can purchase Tesla models at lower prices with a central government subsidy of 8 million won and a provincial government subsidy worth up to 10 million won. Now, to close out today's episode, I'm going to leave you with a roughly four minute clip of a Jeff Don presentation that he gave about three weeks ago talking about Tesla's lithium ion batteries and lithium ion batteries in general. And what we plot is the charge discharge capacity of small lithium ion pouch cells. They're probably about one, one fifth or one tenth the capacity of what's in your cell phone, but they are exact replicas of, and we charge and discharge them in this case with a one hour discharge and a one hour charge. And every 100 cycles, we do a 20 minute discharge and we do a half an hour discharge and so on. And we call that a rate test. But really what I want you to look at is the cycle number axis here. It goes to 10,000 charge discharge cycles. And these cells have been going for 10 years, uh, for three years so far. These ones are being charged 80% of their full capacity, 90%, 100%. And all of these show no evidence of failure at all after three years and 10,000 cycles. So. You know, it's pretty incredible. A well-designed lithium ion cell can can work like a charm for a very, very long time. And if you do the math and you say, look, let's just put these in a moderate range electric vehicle, 350 kilometers per cycle, 10,000 cycles, that's three and a half million kilometers. You know, that's incredible. Like no vehicle is ever gonna go 3.5 million kilometers, at least not a passenger vehicle. So do we need batteries that are this good? I mean, is it, is it really necessary? And it's actually even better than this. So here's some other data that just shows you that if you're doing this 100% depth of discharge, so this means charge all the way as much as you can and discharge all the way as much as you can, then you can see there's some small capacity loss that's taking place over these 20,000 hours of testing. 8,700 hours is a year. So this is about two and a half years of testing. But look what happens when you just use the, the battery as most electric vehicle drivers would do. The majority of your trips are commuting to and from work where you might go, you know, 50 kilometers, 80 kilometers, not the full 400. And if you're doing these short range trips, 25% depth of discharge, Look at this, there's absolutely no loss. Two and a half years, 15,000 cycles. So when, when well-designed lithium batteries are used in vehicles, the lifetime is gonna be incredibly long. And again, I come back to this and say, do we need batteries that are this good, right? And this is where you have to think about what are we not doing that we should be doing? And the first place where this should happen is in situations where you know exactly what the vehicle is doing every single day. A good example is a school bus. Like you know, in the morning, the school bus is gonna go gather up the kids, take them to school, and then it's parked. And it's parked when the sun is shining in the middle of the day, it should be charging at that point. And then when it's in the afternoon, the school bus takes the kids home. And then during the nighttime, it can be discharged into the grid, you know, at the time of day that Lucas was talking about when everybody's coming home, plugging in their, you know, making dinner, turning on lights, running a TV, all these school buses can be discharging to just the level where they have enough, enough electricity to make the first morning drive again. And all of this is, coupled to the weather reporting, because if it's not gonna be sunny the next day, you don't wanna discharge all the way, you know? So you think about the computer um, software that needs to be done to do this intelligently and smartly, you know, it's a lot of work to do, but with an awesome lithium ion cell, it makes enormous sense. 
But that will do it for today's episode of Tesla News. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a great day.